Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to continue our 2015 teacher workshop series with number 31 from the CSET Multiple Subjects Practice Test, Subtest 2. That's a mouthful, huh? <laughs> 31 is a really good intermediate math problem involving uh, decimals and fractions and number lines. So you're going to need, uh, you're going to want a pad of paper to take notes and to work through the problem. And this is definitely going to be something which I'm hoping that you've uh, you've already studied your core fractions because you'll need that background knowledge to help you with this type of problem. Let's look at number 31. I'll read it over and we'll work through it. It says, use the number line below to answer the question that follows. They give a number line. You'll notice that P and Q are points on that number line between 0 and 1. So they're less than 1. They're decimals. It says, which of the following numbers can be represented on the number line between P and Q? And then those we have those numbers represented in fractional form. So we're looking for a number here that, that falls in between these. So greater than P, less than Q, somewhere in this range. And uh, we're probably going to have to deal with, you know, finding out the either the fractional or the decimal representations of these two and matching them up with the, the fractional or decimal representations of these, right? Now, we noticing on this number line, any values that are less than P, we can eliminate right away. And any values that are greater than Q, we could eliminate. So what are P and Q? Because if we don't know what that is, it's going to be hard to answer this. To get the values of P and Q, you look at the whole number line. And you just got to, you know, intuitively hopefully know that, you know, the distance, the distance between 0 and 1 is, is one whole. And these, all these are sort of increments that add up to one whole. So each one of these increments, and we got to count them up very carefully, are going to add up to one whole. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pieces or increments that add up to one whole, so each one of those eighths, each one of those pieces is equal to one eighth. So this point is one eighth. This one would be enough, would be adding a, an eighth to the one eighth, and we'd get two eighths. This would be three eighths, four eighths. P would be five eighths. Good, we found uh, a fractional representation of P. Q would be 6 eighths, this one would be 7 eighths, and when we add our last eighth to it, we get 8 eighths or 1. All right, how does this, so this does help me. I, I've identified that, you know, P is 5 eighths, Q is 6 eighths. Let's see if I can analyze this just a little bit more before we continue. We're not, I'm not used to using eighths, but I know that four eighths is the same as one half. So this is, this is equal to one half here. I know two eighths is equal to one fourth. I know uh, six eighths is actually can be reduced to uh, three fourths. So anything that's, you know, less than a half, I can clearly, if any of these options are close to a half, I could, I could eliminate them right away. And anything that's greater than three-fourths, I could eliminate also right away. Um, so if we're thinking about it, this Q here is actually three-fourths, or I know, I know from my understanding of core fractions, and you should, you should know this too, or you should get to the point where you see three-fourths and you say, 0 0.75. If you see 5 eighths, you know, it would be great if you saw 5 eighths and was like, that's equal to 0 0.625. If you didn't see it, I want you to remember, go back to core fractions, and remember that 1 eighth is equal to 0 
two, uh, 0.125. And if we're dealing with 5 eighths, that would be like multiplying this by 5 to get 5 eighths. And that means multiplying this by 5. We have values for P and Q, and we know that we're looking for a number that's somewhere in between 0 0.625 and 0 0.75. Now, I, I laugh, team, because I don't think this is intuitive stuff. I think this is stuff where if you do enough of these math problems, you start seeing these numbers appear over and over again. So it may be just a good idea to remember that 5 eighths is, is equal to 0 0.625, and 6 eighths is the same as 3 fourths, and that's 0 0.75. And, and just have that in your math background knowledge, especially for these intermediate and the more advanced math uh, problems. All right, so I have this here. Now I got to match up which one of these points fits into that range. I look at them, and I'm hoping you're looking at them right now. And I want you to ask yourself which ones, which ones can we eliminate? Let's start there. Well, none of these are core fractions, but uh, if I look at them, like let's say a. I could approximate A. I could say A is approximately 18 over 36, which is equal to, it can be reduced to 1 half, which is equal to 0 0.5. Now, that's a really important step, being able to look at this funky fraction and approximate it into a fraction which then we can reduce to a core fraction. Once you know the core fraction, I'm hoping you know the decimal representation of that core fraction. Since it's about one half, it's way it's in this region here, and it's it's too small, so I could I could cross out A for that reason. Well, what about C here? What could you approximate this to? This is approximately 40 over 60. Is that right? which could be reduced, I could reduce it to 4 over 6, which can be then reduced to 2 6 I'm sorry, 2 thirds. Now 2 thirds, I'm hoping that you, you know that 2 thirds is equal to 0 0.667. So the 6 is repeating. But if you didn't know that, I would want you to know that 1 third is equal to 0 0.333 repeating. And that two-thirds would be double that, right? One-third is 0 0.333 repeating, so two-thirds would be double that, so it would get you something like this. And this value here is, in fact, in between these two, and C is the answer. Let's stick with first, you know, I want you to be able to analyze the number line, so you can come up with P is 5 eighths and Q is 6 eighths, being able to... Uh, Find the decimal equivalence of 6 eighths is 3, 3 fourths or 0 0.75, and the decimal equivalent of 5 eighths, if you, haven't, if you don't memorize it as 0 0.625, be able to, to show how you get to that number. And then um, be able to really quickly pick a couple of these, see which ones are too small, which ones are too big, which ones, with just a little bit of math, come out to the right answer of a number that could be in between these two. I think that will help. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Grow Math. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yes, this is definitely an intermediate math level problem um, involving core fractions, decimals, and percents, or not percents, but definitely core fractions and, and decimals and using number lines. So work with it. Um, try it on your own. Let me know what you think. All right, take care, team. Bye-bye.